to Artie Tune, a podcast with artists created and produced by Detlef Schlick, a visual artist and ritual designer, living and loving in West Cork, and best known for his essay about the cause and effect of shamanism, art and digital culture. Working in the field of performance, photography, painting, sound, installations, and film he will dive and discover with us and a weekly creative guest into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. Yes! Diving in the unknown and unexpected mind of creativity together with Ray Mac. Ken Lay today. <laughs> Hi everyone from a lovely Skibbereen in West Cork. Yeah, I'm so happy to have her here because uh, I really admire her storytelling work and uh, I admire the way how she copes actually with our reality such a positive person and oh uh, thank you dad oh yeah i'll have to go out the door with my head turned <laughs> sideways now <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh it's, it's it's it is really great i mean uh, um i'm always happy to meet eclectic people like you you know oh. open-minded people who are uh, still now in, in times like we are now not getting not bitter you know and trying to to achieve the best what they can with with their own creativity and even exploring a new field in creativity and and you are a person like this but we come later to that uh, probably more in the second part we're sitting here in a um at the lovely location at Mardax Magpie. Yeah, it's an Aladdin cave full of stories. Yes, yes. Far, it's surrounded. What, what do you see if you open your eyes here? So, Oh, it's a place of magic. <laughs> yes, everything has got a story. Oh, there's so many artifacts and ornaments and oh, what not. It is, a rocking chair. Uh, oh. It is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, we, we're surrounded by sculptures, by... Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's really uh, a, a, a time, time traveling to the, all our centuries. So, actually, I love this location to do a talk like this together with Ray. Perfect, Ray. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, you did, and thank you very much for asking me to do this. Yeah, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Um, I would like to start with uh, actually, because. I mean, this, the concept of this podcast is I try to keep it as well intimate somehow. And um, you're originally from? I'm. There's a place in Scotland which is named Spam Valley. All right. Spam Valley. Yeah, yeah, everything about me has a story date. Yeah. Spam Valley is about 40 miles from Glasgow. Okay. Now, ages upon me, I'm in my 60s. So when I grew up, yeah. people from this part of the world were very much not wanting to be part of Glasgow. And the only resistance I ever saw was when they were wanting to bring in a G postcode sort of thing. A G postcode? Yeah, what is know, a G postcode? Well, that would be Glasgow. Glasgow say okay. six, <laughs> yeah, seven, yeah. because the area was upwardly mobile and pretty little lace curtains on the window with manicured gardens. Yeah, yeah. But you see, I always wanted to be a Glaswegian. A what? I always wanted to be a Glaswegian because Glaswegians have more stories. What is a Glaswegian? A Glaswegian is someone that comes from Glasgow. <laughs> 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 and like Cork, we think we're... Yeah. The real capital. So, so, so I'm a, so I'm a, uh, Bali, 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 Bali region, <laughs> Bali the hub region, probably. I but mean, uh, I've got to add, I've got half Irish in me from Donegal. Do you? Yes. How comes? Because my mother was from Donegal. 
All right. My father was Scottish. So Your father was from Glasgow? Or? No, he wasn't. He was actually from much more Agileshire, which is further up and along. Yeah. But That's so great. I learned so much through this podcast, actually. What was actually the last huge encounter? I could teach you uh, a little bit about which. what was the name of the poet at the 21st of January. Oh, you mean... Uh, Robert Burns or Robbie Burns. Robbie Burns. On the 25th of January, yes. Yeah. And much to my shame, I don't know much of his poetry, which is terrible. <laughs> it was only you that introduced me to Robbie Burns when I did the storytelling session yeah. in Oasis Cafe. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I mean. And then I, I mean, started yeah. reading it and then I thought, oh, <laughs> this is not what I thought. Yeah, but to be honest, it was very interesting read and research for me and uh, the thing is and the older i'm get i'm getting uh, the more i forget again as well so you know so so half of that what what i, what I told you is already forgotten yeah. <laughs> but but not forgiven so because <laughs> yeah, burns's to a mouse has more depth than i ever thought it really did have i mean he was really critiquing environment and capitalism that's, in a way it's great. Yeah. It's unbelievable i mean it's it's, yeah. it's really if you and 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 that's the that's the great thing about uh, storytelling and, and, and poets, you know, so you really, I mean, they're looking, they are, they are very critical, often critical theorists as well, you know, mm -hmm. on a very subtle way, you know, so that's great. That's, I love it. Cool. So you're from, from close to Glasgow. Well, so I was actually so born in Glasgow, but grew up 40 miles outside Glasgow, maybe 30 miles I was. 10 miles in Glasgow. Nowadays, where I grew up, is actually part of Glasgow because it's a big city now. Yeah. And I grew up BC Glasgow. That was before Cappuccino. Now it's a very European uh, kind of place as well. You know. It is probably. I mean, I didn't research now so much about it, but I could maybe compare with with uh, the Ruhrpott in Germany. So so Essen, Duisburg, and all these areas where they they have. Um, countryside is, is is very small i mean all this this plenty of industrial fabrics they're coming more and more and more i mean that's glass loads and, and the area as well the same but you still have countryside don't yeah. you yeah so if you go further uh, out where where i grew up there was still there's still countryside but if you go further out from where i grew up there is more countryside so yeah. so, so how long did you live there in this place oh uh, until i was 17 17 uh, yeah and then you thought oh, i'm gonna go into the wild oh, mad world i never fitted actually i never fitted i had to escape <laughs> so at 17 i went down to london yeah yeah it's at that time now remember we're going back a few years at yeah. that time it was quite small minded i had a lot of uh, expectations and codes of behavior that really you had to adhere to and the community policed it and yeah. you know if you did anything not quite what was ah, considered sure, yes sure. so wow. where when did you leave them like what you hear so far make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now this podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the so, show. Where? When did you leave them to London? When? What, what was it? Was in, in the seventies? In the seventies. Seventy. Uh, oh gosh. Which which song was in the in the charts? Would you believe? I think Baker Street. That's the one I remember. And was Jerry a, Rafferty. Yes, and I I met Jerry Rafferty. Did you? Yeah. I well. Oh. Uh, Jerry Rafferty and Billy Connolly, they were in a group called the Humble Bombs and they used to play up in the Canal Club, but I wasn't really interested as such because this is before they were really known. Yeah, sure. So, sure. Yeah. so you met them where in London or what? No, in, in actually Glasgow. So is he from Glasgow? I mean, I don't know. Too much uh, Jerry Rafferty, I know he's from Scotland. I think he's from Paisley, actually. But right. somebody's probably listening to this and saying, no, Ray, it's wrong, it's Glasgow or it's wherever. But... He's from the Central Belt, anyway. All right. And I know Billy Connolly's from Glasgow, anyway. So. I mean, I really liked Baker Street. It was a beautiful yeah. song, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And Baker Street it was was about where was it? In, that's where in Scotland, or what? No, it was about the street in uh, London. Baker Did you see? Street. I was yeah. wondering. That was the reason yeah. why I thought. Yeah. Yeah. 
performance uh, shows in London at the time. Yeah. yeah. So so you went to London and uh, uh, what did you do there? I mean, how was it for you as as you arrived? I mean, it must. Be, how old were you? 17, 18? I was about 17. You see, I have to say before I went to, uh, to London, I spent just a little bit of time in Bergen in Norway. And when I came back from Bergen, my head just wouldn't fit. So that's why I packed up and got a job down in uh, down in London. It yeah. was easier to get a job then. You could walk into work. Bob, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I, I really loved the market scene down there. And yeah. it had a had a buzz and I just really loved it. Lovely. So yeah. Rock and roll. Yes, oh. that's right. London. And so you probably used to like the punk scene as well, didn't you? Yeah. Did you get into that somehow? I got into it, and I didn't get into. It, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. You're not. You're not. You're not a get into us. So, so you love your. I mean, I'm the same. I'm never was a heavy metaler or this yeah. and that. I mean, yeah. I had long hairs, and people compared me to Bon yeah. Jovi. That was really ridiculous, <laughs> and <laughs> it was actually yeah. quite mean. Yeah. I I, but know. I did go to some punk gigs, you know, and but then what, again, what did you see? Oh gosh, nobody really kind of known. It was kind of people that Clash were... as well. No, I never saw the Clash. Ramones. Not the Ramones. Sex Pistols. I didn't see the Sex Pistols. It was all kind of like maybe more B groups than the. You know. What do you know? Any names of them? Oh, Mekongs was was some, but they, oh, they weren't. Oh, it'll come back to me probably after this. Outcast. Interview. I mean, they are they are uh, Northern Irish from yeah, Belfast. Yeah, I think some uh, the group called the Fall. They were the fall they were great i know them yes, yeah. yeah what was about velvet underground yeah oh velvet underground yeah yeah and miko yeah did you see ken no this is not a very good uh, I, I i remember seeing groups you see i was a type of person even when i went to glastonbury i didn't go to the pyramid stage all right i was in the tp valley part yeah. and there was always the yeah. the the people that were not really known the big names I kind of like that, Dad. I like the people who are just, you know, intimate with their plane of music, where you can just sit. I know, I and know. I don't like crowds. Me neither. I mean, I never, I never really fancied it. But I mean, the thing is, and if you are an artist or a musician like me, I had my punk rock band in, in, oh, in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, the problem is, you know, you have to be in the crowd, you know, yeah. even if you don't want. And that was for me often quite uh, exhausting. Mm. I mean, that's the reason why I'm, I'm living now in countryside. You know, so <laughs> I, 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 me yeah. too. Yeah. So, so I did see bands, but none would be. I mean, I saw other bands that weren't punk. Yeah. I For mean, instance, I saw Floyd. Uh, and All right, the bigger the, ones. But yeah, and I seen. I saw. I saw Mark Bolin when he was part of T Rex. All right. Where did you see him? I actually saw him in the Glasgow Apollo. And I Glasgow what? Apollo. All right. How many people were fitting you? Oh, 300, 400 or more at this time? There was quite a lot. Oh, right. Yeah, it was a lot. And okay. I really needed therapy after David Bowie kind of said goodbye to Ziggy. I mean, when you say goodbye right. to yeah. Ziggy, because yeah. that was me, I was kind of needing therapy. What could life be without me being like Ziggy Stardust? Okay, yeah. So you lost the ground control to Major Tom. Oh, yes. Friend. It was ashes to ashes, <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh. How was it? How was it after David Bowie passed away for you then? I mean, uh, did you did you were suffering a lot from it? Or? Yeah, because I never thought I would feel like that about anyone. But you see, I think David Bowie was a part of the soundscape of my kind of generation. We were, ex well, I was exploring identity, ways yeah, of sure. being. Yeah. I wanted to see different things, try out different yeah. things. I mean, the, the thing about the alter ego, I have it, I have it with this alter ego thing. And David yeah. Bowie was one of the of the biggest uh, yeah. uh, inventors of yeah. that in, in the 20th century, yeah. I would say. You know, yeah. he didn't fear about that, yeah. like, like Mick Jagger as well. No, I think Bowie. Boy, it was better. It was better. Because at that time, you know, well, probably not so much boy, because at least he had shorter hair. But I remember, like, my father and all his generation would be looking horror with long hair, yeah. guys with long yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I remember yeah, he was the quite platforms. Fancy, yeah. and my quite mother, feminine as yeah. well, wasn't he? So, yeah. I mean, 
So it was. He was a woman there, though. Yes, yeah. he was indeed. Yeah. yeah, but at that time, it was a good time. It was like, hey, this is a time of exploration, experimentation. I, can't ima- I know. I can imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. well, unfortunately, you know, my yeah. path took a bit of a detour. A detour when I got married too young. How old have you been? Oh, I was nineteen, and oh, that's why God. probably. That's Children why, or yes, I have, which and they've turned out all okay. But yeah, so that's why I didn't really see the punk. Uh, sure, for, sure. For so sure. you married in London? Uh, no, I married in a place in a girl called Benin. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Benin was an interesting place. W- what's the name? Benin. I don't know what is it. It's a little town in a girl. All right. And at that time. <laughs> This is how I got involved with CND. It was the American base was there, the American nuclear naval base was there, Polaris. Okay. Which, when I look back, I mean, I'm not into nukes or anything like that, but it did shape my mind because you had oh. you had the clubs like PJs, mm. and it was full of like Latin American and Black American, and so yeah. I got into that. You know, different, different kind of culture. music, yeah, yeah, and, and sure. different ways of being. What was this music then? What what oh, what, you, what you explored oh the, from the American? What did you probably the Doors, wasn't it? Oh, the, well, the Doors. So yes, you got you got well, all this 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 Vietnam rock and roll. Oh yes, that's what I used to like. All this, all the kind of protest songs. Yeah, oh, I love that. Yeah. Yes, you know. The songs, you know, uh, kind of where have all the flowers gone? And it was really very interesting because I met this uh, woman in this colorful collective flat, and she was part of Raging Grannies. And the Raging part of what? Raging Grannies. Ah, uh, Raging Grannies. What is that? You, you, I've learned. Now I'm, I'm learning. Yeah. What is it is? Raging Grannies are anti-war activists, women who dress up with. Big flouncy hats and poor <laughs> feathers, you know, and yeah, all that yeah, kind yeah, of I can stuff, that. you know. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. so yeah. that got me into different kind of books as well. It wasn't just the music; it was the books. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of. So you started then later, when yeah. in twenties, probably you yeah. got a lot of time and yeah. you, you read a lot. And yeah, and you met met people, you know, who had been in Vietnam who wanted to come and speak against all the sure. stuff because yeah. Vietnam Did was you start open. already being being a little bit uh, um, a protests poets uh, in, in your 20s somehow? You start writing poets in your 20s? Well, it was very difficult for me because my marriage wasn't good. I was really choked by... Yeah, the, uh, he didn't like it probably. You were too creative. You, you were too r- r- rebellion. Yeah, you you yeah. you actually you exercise the rebellionism. Yeah, <laughs> for me it was kind of like cheese. It was cheese and wine, and I didn't really fit in that scene. Uh, how many children did you have? I've got three. You know that was yeah. a good part. You know it was really a good part. Yeah, because but, I brought them up in the Isle of Arran, uh, and that was good. Yeah, and but it was kind of the things that I couldn't do, or I, and I suppose I went yeah. silent a bit because. Yeah, sure just to keep the yeah. peace so I, I mean it's so lively like you are you you need to challenge you know oh, yeah. and, and i can't imagine you in a marriage it, it is very oh. difficult isn't it I mean, yeah i became agoraphobic now people would not believe that with me yeah i became so agoraphobic i couldn't get out of the house for 18 months god yeah no, no i can imagine so so an anxiety well it was Everything was being stripped away from me. My sure. identity. Yeah. I had oh, to be yeah, this yeah. person. It fits actually quite good into the lock- lockdown now somehow. Yeah. So how do you gonna cope? I don't. Um, I promised myself not gonna speaking too much about the lockdown. But how are you gonna cope with this? I mean, I see this podcast a little bit like the diary, uh, the Irish diary, a modern Ar- Irish diary, like like uh, the um, Heinrich Böll did, but very modern. Um, how did you cope with with, with the lockdown somehow? Did you did you feel a little bit um, anxiety again as well, or? It's actually quite uh, surprising. At the beginning, when I heard about lockdown, I thought, "Oh no, I'm not going to cope. I'm going to want to get out." But actually, it was better for me than I thought. Yeah, for me too. It was. It gave me a chance, really, to get into my comic art. Yeah, yeah. Where we're we gonna speak in a second second 
part in, yeah. uh, of, about it because I mean we have to talk such a lot. Of, I mean I could could extend it already up to two or three hours I think, <laughs> but uh, but Ray has to leave soon as well because she has uh, she has to, to work on other things. We explain that in the second part too. Uh, maybe just coming short back to the to the, to the, in the first part too. Yeah, okay. So you had your marriage and then you you start. Uh, when did you start to decide? I'm, I'm I am a storyteller. Well, actually, it was, I've always, I suppose, been a storyteller, but it was that evening in Blarney. I was in Blarney and it was a lovely day. You could smell the honeysuckle and a lovely woman called Mary Walsh, who runs the Gab Storytelling in Cork, mm. forced me to go up and tell a story. All right. Yeah. Mm. And I did. And from that moment on, I was kept, I was asked to come back and tell other stories. And then I kind of thought, oh, I love telling stories. And it was kind of like, you see, I believe stories are a gift. And I believe storytelling kind of chooses you to. I mean, we are actually, uh, if we go 2000 years and more back, and, and Plato's was already. Our, okay, this is, this is the sound now. Um, I would say uh, we stopped the first part. You hear the noise already in the background. And um, I'm great to have you here. And we continue with the second part soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> great. Cool. This is a listener-supported show. If you like what you hear, be sure to tune in Friday for the second part of this weekly audio tour. I feel honored if you subscribe to this show. You can follow me non-financial with the following click on one of my Instagram accounts or subscribe to the visual version of this podcast on YouTube via the link. If you want to leave a donation for a coffee or a bus ticket, just follow the donation link via the Attitude podcast. Eventually, I would like to thank, through this medium, all my members and listeners of the I Love West Cork Artists Network from all over the world. Just to remember myself that without you, this year couldn't and wouldn't Happen. You have listened to Artitude, West Cork's first art, fashion, and design podcast. Artitude, never so close again. Ah! That was too close.